Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and today we are getting around to something I've meant to do for some time, and that is to dig into Arena Rex. So today we're going to look at the Zafiri Starter Box, and a starter box for Arena Rex usually consists of three models, and here you can see them obviously. So the Zafiri are kind of an interesting group in that they've got the Atlanteans, but they have also people from the New World as well, and they don't really have them shown on the artwork here, but we have Sven, um, I'm not even gonna, Jarovit and Frigg, I don't know. Scandinavian names are not my forte, but you know what it is? I'm building a bunch of models that I really don't need to have out right now, because it's not like I'm gonna get to paint them anytime soon. Actually, these I might, they don't look too complicated. So, what do we have in here? Well, we have everything in a nice, neat little envelope. Which then asks the question, if it's this compact, maybe we should not use up so much space with retail packaging? Maybe a little bit smaller box? I don't know. Nitpick. Anyway, let's take a look at what we got. Okay, so we have our three models here. Everything is mostly resin. I only say mostly because I'm assuming this is... Dude, what's your name? Yeah, Sven is armed with a metal spear, which is in need of some straightening out. That's okay. We have our cool looking wolf girl. And then we've got our shield maiden looking lady over here. So we'll dig all them out in a little bit. I was curious about the bases involved with this. They do seem to be plastic, nicely textured. Of course, they're gonna get covered with sand and painted up as sand, but that's okay. You got the AR for Arena Rex on the bottom. And you have these cool little funky fatigue tokens that are part of the game system as well. So there should be one for every fighter. Woo! Yeah, there are, there's three. And then we have a bigger base. Not a whole lot different for our lady friend there, Jarvit, which I'm probably saying wrong. So every school or ludus in the game has a little benefits card that will teach you all about some of the things that that specific ludus has available to them, or not, if you're gonna go like with the exiles or something fun like that. You have your standard card here with everybody's stats on them and their special abilities on the back. Besides that, you have a pit token included, and what really sets this apart and enters into Kingdom Death-like boutique miniature territory for me are these nice art cards that you get for every member of your Ludus. And then they have a cool little background about that character, where they came from, the school they belong to, and what they're all about. So, cool little detail there plus they're nice little painting guides so and actually a lot of people that have done artwork for kingdom death are involved with arena rex as well so models come in eh, not too many parts let's see if we can get that closed up there jar of it i believe i'm still not saying her name correctly resin casting is nice a little bit of cleanup is going to be necessary here don't know if they're all like that or it's just my luck her big fancy cape, which I'm assuming is going to attach like that somewhat. We have her hands as separate pieces. One right here that doesn't want to stay in focus. It's got a knife. Trust me on that. And she's got some kind of a big... Nope. That's not the thing I'm looking for. It's just a bunch of flash. A cutty, punchy daggery gauntlet thing that probably has a name that I can't think of at the moment. Here's the dagger that I was trying to show you. And piece of scrap. Go away. So anyway, that's her parts. She's going to be on the larger base, I think, just because of her stance. Let's pop Sven here. Eesh. Curious what their resin quality. Now, they are different colored resins. Usually that means nothing. In my experience. As you can see here, yes, they are different colors, in fact. His sword arm is unattached. I'm hoping there's a reasonable contact point. It doesn't look like it. 
Oh boy. So that metal is really thin. It's thin to the point where I feel like I'm just going to have to replace the whole thing somewhere down the line. I feel like it's the most detailed sphere anyway. I'm going to do my best to straighten it out though. For whatever that's worth. Does it really want to connect? Yeah, sort of, kind of. Okay. And then our third model is Frigg. If I'm even saying it correctly. And also the model with the most parts. Because you have to glue her arms and her leg and her shield and her axe. And I'm not sure what that is next to the shield. Feathers? Hair? I don't know. There's a bunch of it, too. That's ponytail. I can recognize that, at least. Ah, they are feathers. I'm wondering if she was part of the Native contingent. So there are actual Native American First Nation types that are available to the Zafiri Ludus. So, well, if I can hold her in one hand. She does have very thin limbs, so that's a bit of a worry. However, I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem, especially once I get the bases textured and put some sand on there, put a little bit of super glue around it. I don't worry too much. I think she'll be okay. Definitely not as sturdy as like Majorit or whatever her name is here. I really like this model, and I'll be honest, she was probably the reason I picked this Ludus over the others. And, you know... Maybe we'll go back and pick up another Lutus later on down the line. Anyway, let's grab those clippers and get some glue, and we'll put them together and see how they stack up to other models we got laying around, yeah? All right, we've got our Zafiri starter all finished up here for the most part. And again, for the most part, because as always, I can't help myself and bother putting them on their bases. We'll take a quick look at all the models one at a time, since Sven here is at the forefront and wants to hung the limelight. I gotta say, after cleaning them up a bit, I really am impressed with the level of detail. But then again, the sculptors that were involved with a lot of these models were guys that worked on stuff like Kingdom Death, things like Mears' line of Darklands models. Um, they're very experienced sculptors and it's very obvious in the amount of work that's gone in here. So, there, I mean, you can just see there's a lot of detail work in his legs and on his just all the little things floating around and all the little things that need to be cleaned off still. I did have to work a little to get his arms to fit and had to drill out a little bit in both the metal arm and his resin one but in the end I'm quite pleased with the results and once I put some sand and glue and super glue on that base he's going to be nice and secure there and he actually is standing up fairly decently as it is. Next up we got Frigg here, and I'm not a big fan of her pose, and I'm not a big fan of the sculpt sound to say. Uh, part of it is I feel like her legs are too short for her body. I feel like she's got a really long torso in her head, and then her legs just seem kind of short. Maybe it's just me. The pose itself isn't bad, and she actually glued onto her base fairly simple. She just seems to have really long legs, and she does seem to have a bit of a Native American vibe going on there with the feathers and the hatchet, and I did a terrible job. I don't know where these feathers were supposed to go exactly on the shield. I'm figuring kind of more towards the middle, but eh, it works out okay. Getting the stuff on her headdress there was a bit of a pain, but I think in the end it worked out all right. I still feel like her legs are just a little too short. But she's like a tall model, too. It's not like she's a shorty or anything like that. And then there's my friend with the unpronounceable name that I am continuing to butcher over and over, Bjarvit. I don't know. I really like her, though. She's probably going to be the first one that I actually bother getting around the painting. And now that I look at her, you know what it reminds me of with all these crazy hair braids? flying around. It reminds me of the sword hunter from the white speaker sword hunter from Kingdom Death and now I wish I had grabbed her when I was looking for models to make some comparisons to because honestly that's the first thing that I thought of upon looking at these guys when they were finished was Kingdom Death and Darklands. So you can see here Kerouac is a bit of a biggie but scales pretty nicely actually with them and considering the pedigree of the sculptors that are involved here that's really not that surprising that they all 
kind of fall in line. Yeah, naturally they don't have the super heroic proportions that Kerouac has, but then again, he's not fighting in the arenas of Athens or Rome, I should say, not Athens. Although there is the Hellenistic Ludus who has the naked wrestlers, but we'll we'll get into that some other time. If you so wish to have them participate with GW Minis, there is going to be a little bit of a size discrepancy, and I thought, well, the most gladiatorial-looking models would be those of the Splintered Fang, but even they're kind of short compared to our models here. But obviously, that's because they're totally scaled with things like Kingdom Death, and using our resin and plastic model I have handy, you can see that, yeah, they're pretty nicely scaled there. Now, obviously, our two Kingdom Death ladies are in a bit more static, relaxed poses compared to the dynamicism of the Arena Rex model, so, you know, it is what it is. And I thought it would be kind of fun. I know my parents picked this up for me years ago on one of their trips to Italy, which was a model of a gladiator that they got in Italy. I want to say at the Colosseum, but I could be wrong. I'll just pretend that it was, and maybe they'll clarify it after they see this video. So, yeah, that'd be helpful. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with the models for the price. I know I got this when they were having a sale on their website last time, and that's something to check out. Even if you don't buy anything right away from their site, they do run fairly regular sales, especially around big holidays, Black Friday, obviously, and some of the other big ones. So do take a look and sign up for their web. Uh, <coughs> sorry, not their website. Um, their mailing list so you can keep up to date. And I, I mean, I do like the fact that they have the cool little cards now. They're not, you know, postcard stock. They're a nicer kind of velour. I don't know what kind of description those art cards have, but it is a nice touch. And I do like the, the flavor text on the back. Something I long have wished that Kingdom Death would do because finding that lore later on is kind of a hassle. So anyway, for the price, check it out. Um, you get everything you need in the box for actual playing. All the rules are free and online. If you're interested in the rules, they're like, I don't know, five or six bucks, and they come in a nice color little stapled book that you can't really see because I need to zoom the lens out. There we go. And you can see here, they're pretty nice looking rules, and the artwork is quite nice. I can't think of the artist's name. Is it in here somewhere? Artists, yeah, Yasmin Tree. I know they were involved with Kingdom Death, if I remember correctly. But anyway, nice looking stuff. Give it a look. Nice models overall, and quite happy with my purchase. And hopefully, if you guys are curious to check it out, you will be as well. With that said, this is High Lord Tamberling with Obscurities and Miniatures, and we'll see you all later. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.